Today's chapter in the Beginner's Guide to an Anti-Inflammatory Diet, Glycemic Index. What is it, how does it affect inflammation, and how can you incorporate it into your diet? This is the fourth video in our series on a low inflammation diet to help you learn more how to reduce chronic inflammation in your body and hopefully prevent disease. In today's video, we're diving into the second of the four pillars of a low inflammation diet. The four pillars are antioxidants, low glycemic index, omega-3s, and whole foods. I first started learning about a low inflammation diet when my husband Abraham had some problems with his asthma recently, and we had to figure out how to prevent him from having such severe symptoms. We found a video by Dr. Ron Hunninghockey of the Reorgan Clinic, and I'll link to that down below. So all the information about these four pillars comes from what he has to teach us. Glycemic index, what is it? Well, your body transforms carbohydrates into glucose, a kind of sugar that it uses for energy. And the glycemic index is a measure on a scale of zero to 100 for each food of how fast your body transforms those carbs into energy. For some kinds of foods like refined sugars and refined grains, that process happens very rapidly and it leads to a spike in your blood sugar. For other kinds of foods, things like vegetables or whole grains, the process happens more slowly and your blood sugar stays more level. So why does this matter? For foods with a high glycemic index, what happens is when you eat them, your body transforms them into sugar very quickly and you get that spike in your blood sugar. This tells the pancreas that you need to bring your blood sugar down, so it starts producing insulin and your blood sugar comes down very rapidly as well, and suddenly you might feel shaky or hungry and feel like you want to eat some sugars or some kind of carbs. So that puts you on a roller coaster. High blood sugar, low blood sugar. High blood sugar, low blood sugar. And it leaves you feeling exhausted. If you've ever had that feeling where you just need a little coffee and a muffin in the middle of the day to keep on going, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This roller coaster can cause inflammation in a couple of different ways. First, sugars can actually reduce the antioxidant power of foods, which increases the levels of oxidative stress in your body. And if you want to learn more about antioxidants, you can check out our past video that we had on that. Another way is that the increases in insulin actually lead your body to create an enzyme that converts omega-6 fatty acids into an acid that promotes inflammation as well. So all kinds of processes are going on in your body that are pro-inflammatory when you eat these high glycemic index foods. If a food has a glycemic index of 70 or more, we say it has a high glycemic index. If the number is 55 or below, we say it has a low glycemic index. And those low glycemic index foods are things that digest more slowly in your system, keep your insulin levels more stable, and keep your blood sugar levels more stable as well. It's also important to know that the glycemic index number isn't the end-all be-all measure of how fast your body is actually going to transform those carbohydrates into glucose. There are several other factors that are at play. Number one is the way that you prepare your food. If you prepare your food with fats or fibers or acids, it can actually lower the glycemic index of your food. Number two, ripeness. For fresh produce, think about something like a banana. The more it ripens, the sweeter it's going to get and the higher the glycemic index is going to be. Number three, the mix of the food in your meal. So if you mix some high glycemic index foods with some low glycemic index foods, the overall glycemic load of the meal is more balanced out. And number four, of course, portion sizes. The more of the carbohydrate you eat, the more of a blood sugar spike you're going to have. All right, so what should you be eating? At Simplify Fresh, we're never going to tell you that a food is forbidden, but just give guidelines on what to eat more of or less of. So try to eat more of those low glycemic index foods. That's things like whole grains, nuts, legumes, and vegetables without starch. Then try to eat less of those high glycemic index foods. So that's things like potatoes and white rice, white bread, candy, sodas, anything with a whole lot of sugar in it. If we want to reduce the overall glycemic index of our foods, but we still want to have a sweet treat every once in a while, what are the best sweeteners to use? Here are a few of our favorites that are low in fructose and have a low glycemic index too. Stevia, coconut sugar, blackstrap molasses, honey, maple syrup, and dates. This is a coconut covered date treat, which is one of my favorite sweets. <laughs> 
So with all those ideas of what to eat with a lower glycemic index, I'm curious, what can you do to substitute a high glycemic index food that you're currently eating for a low glycemic index food that maybe you should be eating more of? Let us know down in the comments below. If you learned something today, I hope you'll share this video with one of your friends. Give it a like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this one. We'll also place a link to the blog, and you can go there to sign up for our newsletter for more tips like this. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.